What's up guys, my name is Zach and this is the Mercurial. Over the years I've used pretty much every single ship for PvE, especially for level 4 missions, and every time I always end up coming back to this absolute monster of a ship. In this video I'd like to update the current fit which I'm using after a recent slot layout rebalance and offer up some advice on how to use this beast to wreck your way through the missions. But first, let's take a closer look at the Mercurial and see why it's so good. From a lore perspective, the Mercurial is an angel battleship based on an uncovered ancient Jovian design, and in the pirate class, it inherits bonuses from multiple factions, Glante and Minmatar respectively, as well as having dedicated angel roll bonuses. We're looking at 7.5% bonus to large projectile turret falloff per level, and 5% bonus to large projectile turret damage per level. The roll bonuses are 25% large projectile turret rate of fire and a very welcome 50% warp speed and warp acceleration time, pushing it up from the usual slow 2 AU a second to 3 AU a second, which doesn't seem a lot on paper, but in practical use, especially blitz and level 4s or roaming in PvP, it makes a massive difference. All of these bonuses synergizing together is what makes this a fast, agile and very hard hitting battleship. We can get more into the numbers later on the video, but for now, let's take a look at the fit. My Mac is pretty much min-maxed as far as it can go, bar a full mid and low slot abyssal or officer loadout. We're talking polarized guns, max DPS with very limited tank. Some might not feel comfortable using it for the tank reasons, but also it was pretty expensive and can be easily lost when you're not paying attention. Starting at the top rack then, we have 7 polarized 800mm repeating cannons, offering the most damage potential at the expense of the obvious tank issues and a little bit lower range compared to the T2 counterparts, but they still are dealing 1496.3 DPS, and a fun fact if you throw in an agency pyro DB9 dose 4 booster, it reaches an insane 1631 DPS and that's more damage than having four of the best officer gyro stabilizers in the low slots. That's completely madness. The Tech 2 variants of the 800 still get a massive 1197.1 DPS, so currently we sit at 299.2 more, but we do get a minus 10 kilometers range to the overall fall off, which isn't really an issue since we have the tracking computers to get around that. 57 kilometers with optimal range scripts running, but you can still one shot pesky frigs at around like 80k or something, it's really insane. And 299.2 extra DPS might not seem a lot more for getting the 0% resistance, adding that big risk, but when you're chasing the min-max optimization, it's totally worth it in my opinion, and also a lots of fun. The last top slot is for a tractor beam, which is obviously not essential, so you can save some CPU there if you're struggling on the fitting, but it makes for grab and loot or jet can mission required items a whole lot easier. Moving on to the mid slots, first up is the Gist X Type 500mn Mike Warp Drive. This makes you very fast on grid and lets you position the ship very easily so you can counter that zero tank with a bit of speed tanking and stuff, which is very handy. Uh, but the most important factor about the mod is that it doesn't give any nerfs to the overall capacitor capacity, which is super important and helps to be in as cap stable as possible as the fit progresses. With the MW on you'll be hitting 1634 meters per second, which is pretty fast in terms of battleships. The Republic Fleet large capacitor battery helps massively with the cap stability, adding a huge 1820 gigajoules to our base 7986, which gives us a massive total of 10492. And this mod has ultimately replaced the need for cap rechargers and flux coils and it's become a must have mod not only for PvE ships but also for a lot of PvP fits out there too, which has been around for quite a while so I'm sure you guys have um, been using them. To get around the lower fall off range of the polarized 800s, we've got two Shadow Serpentis tracking computers both loaded with optimal range scripts. This takes us from 41km fall off to 57km. These mods also give more flexibility using the tracking speed scripts for the rare time that a fast cruiser can get under their guns and things like that. 
Having 0% resistances, you're going to need to make sure that you can be confident in your tanking ability. Equipping a shield booster that gives a substantial boost while not crippling the capacitor can be a fine balance. In this case, I opted for the Gist XL shield booster. And even though the Pith XL can boost a lot more HP, the Gist XL has the low activation costs we need to help a longer lasting tank, basically. Just before we start talking about the tank, I'm going to sort of cover the rigs in between here because the rigs are like play a pretty big part of why I was theory crafting the way I did instead of using the, the usual CCCs. But knowing that the, the Gist XL shield booster boosts pretty low, I've added the Pith XL shield boost amplifier, which applies an added 45% boost to our 780 HP, given 1130 HP. Also adding the Lodge Tech 2 Core Defense Operational Solidifier Rig, we reduce the cycle time of the, the Gist XL Shield Booster from 4 seconds down to 3.2 seconds. This is a substantial jump in overall repair rates, but additionally comes with heavier activation costs since we boost faster, which is another reason why I went for the Gist XL. It may be pretty hefty in price and boost less, but the activation cost per cycle is ultra low. Standard it's got a 204 gigajoule activation cost where the Pith XL has a 400 gigajoule per cycle activation cost. So you can see the trade-offs here. Together with the two Tech 2 Lodge Core Defense Capacitor Safeguard rigs, which both reduce the shield booster activation costs by 50%, this gives us a total of 135 gigajoules per cycle on our extra large booster. Now 135 is insanely though low, that's lower than most large shield booster activation costs, so this is like the, this is where the theory crafting really came in for me, trying to get the, like that as low as possible while still maintaining a big tank for the 0% resistances. The rigs might seem an odd choice versus the usual triple CCC rigs, which in fact would keep us super stable, but having the extra repair power rather than the lower sustained tank in my mind was essential for getting the most out of the ship. And looking at the low slots guys, of course it's ideal to have the full abyssal mod set up in the lows, all the abyssal gyros and tracking enhancers and things, if that's even a thing for those. And, and even though the current loadout with the ship is pretty expensive, keeping it at a reasonably okay-ish price was needed. Uh, my days of being space rich are long gone sadly. <laughs> But maybe it's something we can look at in the future, um, maybe in the next couple of years we can revisit this again. I think it's been like two years since we did the last um, polarized map vid, so maybe in a couple of years we'll see. But anyway, let's crack on. Uh, we've got four Republic Fleet Gyro Stabilizers for that crazy high damage number. The fourth mod only adding an extra 95 to 100 DPS. Stacking penalties are a pain, but four damage mods I'm sure we can all agree is universally acceptable for PvE. Also, we have a pair of Republic Fleet Tracking Enhancers, which give us a healthy 12km extra falloff range, as well as helping our tracking go from 6.52 up to 7.80. Before the recent slot layout rebalance, we'll be using three Tracking Enhancers and one less Tracking Computer. The changes is welcome for both PVAs and PVP as like. Before we take a look at the capacitor numbers, we need to take a look at the pod and implants because there's definitely some big synergies here that we need to take into account when having a look at the overall cap use and things. So to start off, we've got the Geno Core augmentations, which give us bonuses to power grid, CPU output, capacitor amount, capacitor recharge rate, ship velocity, shield capacity, ship agility, and armor hit points. Also a mid-grade Crystal Epsilon, which gives a plus 3 to Charisma and that 5% shield boost amount, which is the important one. So it's only the single Crystal, but we we'll still get that 5%, which is quite decent. We're also running an AO605 Squire Capacitor Systems Operation, which gives a 5% reduction in capacitor recharge time. Uh, Ogden's Eye Coordination Enhancer, which gives a 6% bonus to turret tracking speed. The AM805 Squire Capacitor Management, which gives 5% bonus to ship's capacitor capacity. Uh, SS905 Surgical Strike Gunslinger, which gives a 5% bonus to all turret damages. That's pretty important, that one. And lastly, a LP1005 Gunslinger Large Projectile Turret, which gives an additional 5% to large projectile turret damage by itself. It's absolutely insane, the pod. So again here we're pushing everything into the damage and tanking ability. The Geno set is a must for all those amazing set bonuses. I don't think a lot of people realise just how much you get out with the Genos. Like, I don't see any reason to use anything else but. 
especially for PvE purposes. I use those on all of my battleships for PvE. The single crystal implant may seem odd, but like I say, it still gives that 5% rep bonus, so in my opinion, it's totally worth it. Now moving on to the capacitor, with everything running at only last 3 minutes and 44 seconds, which might seem low, but just tear us out, we won't be running the shield booster the whole time usually, and simply using the MWD for a couple of cycles now and then for positioning purposes or traveling to acceleration gate is pretty much all you need. So let's break it down. MWD on, shield booster off, stable at 52%. MWD off and shield booster on, 10 minutes and 1 second. 10 minutes of boost time is way more than what's needed and honestly it's not very often you need to perma run the booster either. This cap will also generally be nearly full yeah. The only time I tend to leave it running is when I'm concentrating on elsewhere like if I've got a phone call or I'm interacting with like stream chat or something like that. In the cargo hold guys, uh, when running the polarized fit I'm pretty on top of the positioning and reps but there's always moments like I just mentioned where concentration might like slack so always carry these two the anti-pharmacon thurio given the 8% shield boost bonus and the agency hard shell tp9 dose 4 giving us a 9% shield bonus so you can spam them and just get some like crazy boosts and overheat as well so it's pretty crazy what you can do with those these drugs also have no side effects like the more traditional drug boosters and both of these will last for 30 minutes from the time being consumed uh, both combined the gist x x L shield booster will rep a total of 1334 HP per cycle and if shit starts to get real you can of course overheat the shield booster totaling a massive 1450 HP which cycles at 2.7 seconds. I mean that's absolutely a crazy tank right? Other things include a selection of Republic Fleet ammo, some nanite paste and since I'm in a more space currently I take the Angel Diamond tag for the bonus room and the Angel Extravaganza and also the gate key for the Dread Pirate Scarlet mission just in case we need to speed up the first room. Two track and speed scripts in case we need to switch out from the optimals so they just swish and swap depend on what we've got in. So that's pretty much it for the fit and guide guys. Um, we'll just, we'll, I'll leave a mission run at the end obviously just the way I normally do with some bang and drum and bass or something and in the next video we're definitely going to follow this one up where we're going to chat a little bit more of like how to fly it um, positioning wise and things because you need to be a little bit careful on some missions in case you get absolutely dunked you can't just like sit still or anything you need to like watch your transversal and stuff so Hopefully I'll try and get that out pretty quick or I can I might actually do it on stream so I'll, I'll put a reminder video up and we'll we'll have a chat but if you guys have any suggestions or thoughts on the ship or what I could do better or anything please leave them in the comments. I'll leave all the information in the comments with the pod and everything and screenshots and shit and hopefully you enjoy guys. I did work quite fucking hard and it took months of training to get back up the to top spec on the max so yeah, it's been a fun ride getting back into this bad boy. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.